Joining us for more is David Bunsen, Chief Investment Officer at the Bunsen Group, which oversees $5.7 billion in assets under management. The story Monday was about some of the mega cap tech names, some of those that have fueled the gains in the first half of the year. Some of those names you were particularly concerned about, so you sat on the sidelines away from them. How do you react to the last 24 hours then? Well, it's interesting that with that sector, it wasn't really a Monday story per se. It had started July 10th. Uh, the Nasdaq's drawdown had reached 13.5% yesterday. So there was already quite a bit of slide going on. And I think that does stem from the overvaluation. It's pretty stunning when you see a name like NVIDIA that had been down 25 to 30% and was still trading at about 59 times earnings 30 times sales after such a violent correction. Um, I think even today when you look at Apple still being negative with this kind of uh, bounce back rally today, it does feel to me like a rotation of leadership is very well underway. You, you raise a point that we reiterated in, in yesterday's show that Friday marked four straight weekly declines on the NASDAQ 100, right? You were already in correction territory. I guess a question for someone like you, David, is what do you do now? You know, is the drawdown or, or so-called technical correction enough that you start to look at some of the names that for many, they are uh, teeners or they are, there is no alternative to holding them? Well, there are probably investor categories that might want to look at something there. It would not, they should, certainly shouldn't be doing it because they believe it's reached a value. Uh, these are still extremely expensive stocks. For us as dividend growth investors, the tiny little paltry dividend that the NVIDIA's, Meta's, and Apple's pay is not enough to wet our beak. And, and, and so they would have a long way to go to start returning cash to shareholders for us to be attracted. But even apart from our dividend growth orientation, the valuations are still very high. Um, I, I began professionally managing money in the 1990s, and so I will be forever scarred by the reality of what happens when you overpay for very good companies very big and successful companies that have a generational success, and yet their stock goes nowhere for 10, 15, 20 years. And Cisco's case still hasn't got back to 1999 levels. Those stories are real, and I believe very much they will be the case with some of these names, too. I think investors have to be careful. I, I find names like Cisco, maybe even Adele, interesting as sort of appendages to the infrastructure build out that's happening. I wrote about it in today's Tech Daily, right? If you think about the growth concern, investment or capital expenditures into data center seem to be plowing ahead regardless of, of short term jitters. Is there an opportunity for you in that space, David? Um, or do you think it's, it's just overdone already at this point? Well, and that's a very interesting story because there you can get cash flow. And so, for example, Blackstone has become one of the largest investors institutionally in the data center story, and we're able to get a real yield and become a landlord, so to speak, to data center, become a little bit yes. less concerned with the, with the underlying business fundamentals as to how much Microsoft's going to buy from NVIDIA or what the monetization of AI is going to be. A lot of those questions are not answered. They're not going to get answered anytime soon. Soon, but data center becomes a story that from a brick and mortar standpoint, you can make money in. Uh, I find that so interesting. Never before did I think I'd be writing about REITs in my technology yeah. newsletter. And I use their forecasts or data to kind of look at the market pipeline as a whole. Earnings. Um, you know, this morning we wake up Palantir strength, Uber strength. Um, last week, we learned from Microsoft in particular that if you miss estimates, uh, you're in trouble. But there's still a long way to run in this earnings period. Have you taken a sort of lesson on the whole from the, those that have already reported? Yeah, we're about 75% of the way through. It does appear that overall earnings growth uh, is not going to be 8% as targeted on the quarter, but probably closer to 5%. Uh, year over year, earnings growth still looks like it'll be about 12%, but some base effects are going to make that a lot harder in the next quarters. And so I think the story of Microsoft is a kind of a microcosm of the underlying reality that there's this sort of feedback loop at play that Microsoft goes up because 
because it's buying a lot from NVIDIA. And NVIDIA goes up because Microsoft's buying a lot from it. And, and of course, there's a lot of other customers. But this idea that AI doesn't ever have to tell you how it's going to make money for real, other than an infrastructure backbone story, um, is problematic. And if those revenues are going to be okay. going down before they've converted to profits, then you have an unwind that has to take place of a feedback loop. David, for the technology sector then, what happens in the second half of this year? Um, I would be somewhat unconstructive on the space on a valuation basis, but we are hardly the uh, the types of technology investors that, that you normally would be speaking to just in the sense of our boring insistence on free cash flow. Um, you know, we own Broadcom in the portfolio. We don't believe it got to the valuation overstretch that NVIDIA has. And then we own old tech names like IBM and Cisco that have ongoing free cash flow from old line businesses businesses, but obviously new growth opportunities. That's the way we would prefer to play it, just simply because we think perfection was priced in to the more contemporary technology names. David, I do not for a second think you are boring. David Bunsen, CEO at the Bunsen Group. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you very much.